Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how one of the most anticipated features of .NET 8 and also one of the most long overdue features of .NET 8 actually changed based on the criticism and feedback we had when we first saw this feature launched. To give credit where credit is due, Microsoft did actually react to it and it did address the feedback and in this video I'm going to show you what the type is, how it was supposed to work, why it sucked and how we helped fix it. If you like the web content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Alright, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple API over here with a simple greeter service and all this really has is a single method saying that hey get the current date time the local date time now and this of course could be UTC now that part doesn't really matter and generate a message based on whether it's morning afternoon or evening that is it now the problem with this system is that it actually has a dependency in the same way that you might have a dependency on a database or a third-party API but it's not so obvious the dependency here is actually the system's clock meaning that if I want to unit test this method I have to go here and write my tests in that way so create my SUT and all of my tests but the problem is when I run all the tests because it's only one time at a given time as you can see one test will actually pass and the rest will fail so this method is actually not unit testable because it has a hard dependency on the system's clock now this is an issue that's been around for a long long time libraries like node time actually address this by providing their own interface to abstract the clock and in fact Microsoft themselves internally had that issue and they had made their own version of the i system clock interface and implementation to address that however there was nothing universal in the BCL that was supposed to be used for that purpose and I should point out that you know you might say that hey Nick just move the date time here and pass it down as a parameter like okay sure but at some method this date time has to be provided so that's not really an argument so how would we solve this problem historically well we would do something like this we would have like a, a, a clock or a system clock or an I date time provider depends on how you want to name things in my opinion a clock is a great name and I don't know why Microsoft did not use that as a name but it's fine so you could have something like this and then maybe you have something like this so you have a date time or date time offset if you want to be even better on the types you're using so you'd have something like this and then you would just say date time now and inject that I clock into your service so you'd have something like this private read only I clock use the clock register it in dependency injection and then use now and then that means you can actually mock this i clock and change the way of returning the now time in any way that you want but what did microsoft choose to do well let's see so microsoft instead of opting in for an interface they chose to go for an abstract class called the time provider which we have a name for things that provide time it's the clock <laughs> but anyway time provider whatever now one of the biggest problems we had with this approach is that the time provider actually had a constructor that required something called the frequency which if you don't know the implementation details of the clock you wouldn't really know what that's supposed to be so that made it actually extra complicated to initialize for testing not only that but all of its members were actually abstract which made everything a bit more confusing because you'd have to implement everything just to get the default implementation of the system clock which didn't really make sense and the last one which was wasn't actually a personal criticism but many people did raise that is that they chose to use UTC now and then local now as a properties in the same way you'd have it in daytime.utc now or daytime.now and the same with daytime offset as well you would have properties that of course are computed so behind the scenes they act like methods but they're exposed as properties now I personally did not mind this because I do like the consistency between daytime and time provider it makes it feel like sort of the same thing so you can just update your code and keep using the same approach the method approach i thought would look like a new thing even though technically it is the correct thing that you should be using for that purpose so i didn't really have much of an opinion on this and i could be swayed anyway really but now let's see what changed and how microsoft actually addressed that the first thing my personal biggest issue no longer do we have a constructor that is not parameterless so now the default is a protected parameterless constructor great fantastic i don't know why we had a parameter full constructor in the first place that was not a good idea thankfully they addressed now the next thing is that they did change all those abstract members so this used to be abstract 
or if I scroll down, this was abstract, this was abstract. So the no longer abstract, they are virtual and they implement the default system implementation. So if I say get timestamp, this will call the stopwatch. Or if I say timestamp frequency again, stopwatch frequency. And if I go up and I say get the time zone info, this will get the local time zone info and so on and so forth for things like get UTC time now uh, and also local time now. So way better, just have the default implementation. And if you need to implement your own version, you only override the things you need to implement. Great, fantastic that they actually did that. And the last thing that you might be able to actually see straight away is that this is no longer a property, but it's actually a clear method. Now behind the scenes, it is still pointing to the daytime offset property, but we have the right type being returned here, daytime offset, and we do have a method that makes it more explicit, which is pretty nice. Not only that, but it's also virtual, making mocking even easier. So I actually really like this approach. Now, if we were to rewrite everything we saw previously in the new way, all you'd really have to do is say, give me a new daytime provider. I no longer need to set that backing time zone as I had to do previously. So I'm just gonna delete this and say, get UTC now returns, whatever that was. And I'm gonna do the same for all the other methods. And that significantly simplifies how I'm supposed to be mocking that new type. And if I have everything here, and I also update this to say get at UTC now. Then if I do that and I go here and I say just run all of my tests, then all of my tests will pass the way I would expect them to. And they're way easier to set up. No parameters in the constructor, clear methods, the right type, daytime offset use, and also virtual members, which is fantastic. Now, why do I make this video? Well, first to address the changes that did happen in this time provider because it did start as a bit of a rocky type, weird name, no interface, abstract members, parameterful constructor, properties that could be methods. So all that was actually addressed and it was addressed because you and me, we were vocal about this and we raised those things. And treat this as a call to action to actually do voice your opinion in GitHub issues, in pull requests, on the .NET repos, because we can actually influence those things. You have to remember that Microsoft has been working with developers that have been seeing the world in their own sort of isolated bubble. They don't build business applications like me and you. They might not test the same way we are testing. So there's a clear rift between how we perceive things and how they perceive things. And unless we're actually vocal about this and we engage with them to express those opinions, we will only get what Microsoft wants, which is the old way of doing things. So please treat this as a wake up call to try and be more engaged with the community and with the product if you actually care about .NET. But now I wanna know from you, what do you think about these changes? And do you think that maybe this should actually have have been an interface all along or should this actually just be a property and not a method i really want to know what you think in the comments down below well that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding